Hey everybody, it's Thomas Bryant here, and I'm joined by my host with the most, Mr. Matt Bradford. How you doing, sir? Thomas Bryant, it has been a day or two. It feels like it's been ages. Oh, and oh, what happened to Matt? Without fail, the internet went down again. Hey, what's up, Thomas? It's been a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's like I think we might be in the matrix. It feels a little deja vu. It really does. Yeah, I think it's a glitch here. But uh yeah, welcome to day three of five of <laughs> realizing everything is new. Today we're talking about logs. Uh oh. You're getting choppy there, Matt. So I'm gonna I'm gonna swing uh, in. But like you were saying, uh today we're here to talk about logs, and we are joined by our illustrious colleague, Mr. Nico. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you, guys. Well, thanks for joining us on the show. Um, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. We just had VMworld wrap up a couple of weeks ago. Lots of new things coming out in the world of vRealize. And today we wanted to talk about logs. So hopefully we were wondering, maybe you could tell us, A, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and, and maybe a fun fact. And then uh, show us what you got. Yeah. So, hey, everyone. Um, Nico Guerrero, uh, new to the team, tech marketing. I came from the <clears throat> TAM side of things where I spent five years um, helping customers out. Um, big logging fan, I guess, if you can be a logging fan. Um, so I knew a lot about Log Insight. Um, so I think that I will be able to give you guys some good information on some of the new releases and something interesting. Um, I have a manual transmission BMW that I'm too lazy to learn to drive, and I'm very ashamed. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, someday. <laughs> now, I have to ask you, since you have a BMW, is it required that you use blinker fluid, or is that an optional thing? <laughs> it's always empty, so, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know that joke, Bob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's optional, I think. I think I, I've, I've, I've got the, uh, you know, the seniority where I don't have to use blinkers anymore. There you go. There you go. All <laughs> right. Well, um, since we're here, why don't we just hop right in um, and tell us, you know, what's new, what's the latest and greatest in the Log Insight world? Yeah, I'll do that. So um, our biggest announcement, I think, or at least the coolest one. So... Um, Right through Log Insight itself, if you update to version 8.6, you see this new tab here that says Log Insight Cloud. Um, all you have to do is request a free trial, and it brings you to uh, your you know, um, organizational login. You can either create a new organization or add to a current one, and you get a freemium trial of Log Insight Cloud to try out and to forward your logs from Log Insight to Log Insight Cloud. So you know, maybe you... Um, Maybe you need a DR location. Maybe you want a single pane of glass for all your logs, um, and you've been wanting to try out Log Insight Cloud, but maybe you know you don't have the budget for it, or you know the capabilities aren't there yet. Right now, you know, with a click of a few buttons, uh, you can bring all your stuff to Log Insight Cloud. You can try it out for I think ten days. Um, you can do you know full fully featured. You can uh, all dashboards, all the queries. You can bring stuff in from uh, vCenter, all of your other locations. Uh, if you have stuff in AWS, if you have stuff in Azure, just set up your proxies and you know uh, condense all your logs and give it a try. And you know if it's for you, uh, you can move on to a subscription. If it's not for you, after ten days, you can just go back to using uh, Log Insight on prem. And um, you know we give you all the setup instructions you need right here. Um, we give you information on you know why we realize Log Insight Cloud and why it's better together with Log Insight. And then, you know, we have some great features in Log Insight Cloud, like uh, index and non-index partitions. So if you want to, you know, ingest some things and keep them in an index partition, have them perform a little better, put some stuff on your non-index partitions, you know, maybe uh, event logs or uh, audit logs, and then maybe have to, you know, query them. And, and you know, some, some customers have to keep them every seven years for uh, auditing requirements, but you can do that in Log Insight Cloud now. So we have a lot of cool features in the product that um, we want customers, we want people to check out. So, you know, if you're interested in, in trying out Log Insight Cloud, just update to uh, URLI 8.6, get your free trial going, forward your logs, and, and see what it can do for you. So I think that's a, a pretty cool feature that we added. Yeah, that's um, awesome. 
right? Yeah. So, you know, we're trying, we're all trying to move to the cloud. Um, we're becoming a SaaS world. So um, if it's free and you get freemium, no reason not to try it out, right? Yeah. I mean, it reduces that barrier of entry. You don't have to like go through some super long, lengthy process and like, you know, give them a hair sample, all that kind of stuff. Just nice, easy, up and running. It's seamless and frictionless. Exactly. And the nice thing is that it's, you know, the back end's provided for you. So um, maybe if you're just trying out Log Insight and you have one location in your primary data center, and then you're like, oh, okay, now I need now I need a DR Log Insight instance. I need an exact clone. I need five terabytes of storage. I've got to wait for the service to come in. No, you don't have to worry about any of that. Just get your trial going, push all your logs up there, and you know, in half an hour, you're you're good to go. There's no friction, no pain, no suffering, and you've got a new environment good to go. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, another cool offering that we have is we have integration with NSX Identity Firewall. So we don't have NSX in our lab, unfortunately, but uh, basically what we can do is um, if you give a host name, username, and password for an NSX manager, and then you have a VPN provider such as uh, ClearPass, such as um, AnyConnect, you know, um, Global Protect, any of those VPNs, um, you can forward logs from those VPNs, from you know those VPN providers, to Log Insight. Log Insight will parse that information automatically. So we have settings for for the top VPN providers like uh, Global Protect. It will take what's in the event. It'll slice it up into pieces using extracted fields, mm -hmm. and it will basically say. I have this user coming in from this VPN location. Hey, NSX, take this through your API. Should he be allowed to go? Should they be allowed to go through to access um, the social media websites? Should this person be allowed to go through the VPN to access payroll or to access uh, this application we have? So it takes the integration that's already in NSX Manager um, using the distributed firewall and all the um, permissions you have laid out in there to basically say that, okay, uh, Joe's coming in through the VPN. Uh, we send that to Log Insight. Log Insight sends the parsed information to NSX, Identity Firewall, and NSX lets you through um, depending on, you know, your your um, Active Directory credentials and the IP address you're, you're coming from. So this was a big thing internally. Um, we, uh, at VMware, we, we needed this, I guess, um, we needed this this feature pretty badly, so we we were using some th some third party firewalls or some third party tools uh, from Palo Alto that were doing this job. So I think we basically said, you know, we could probably do this just as good internally uh, with one of our products. So you know, they went back to the development team and said, can we do this with um, Log Insight? And out of that came this. So instead of using you know paying X amount of dollars for these. Um, Accessories or these, you know, these these add-ons for the firewall to parse this information. Log Insight does it. So if you already own Log Insight, all you have to do is update to eight six. And you know, if you have some of these VPN providers that your 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 employees are coming in through, and if you have uh, NSXT, you know, just integrate it, get yourself a Surface account, and try it out. That is pretty cool. Like yeah, really, it's cool. all done transparently, right? The the user has no idea that this is happening in the back end. Absolutely. So yeah, they just log in and then log insight takes that event and then parses it and then throws it in as X manager and you know, they're in and they're where they need to be. Wow. Yeah. So making life easier. Very so, um, yeah, I think that that's a cool one. And then those are our two main features, uh, that have the biggest impact. And then we have some other features that are, are still cool. Um, but you know, not as sexy maybe. So, Oh, what do we have here? No, oh, okay. Cool. So we have a new uh, RBAC setting for roles. So um, if any of you admins remember older versions of Log Insight, uh, you had five permissions and a small handful of roles that you can choose. And it was kind of restricting. Um, it wasn't super enterprise. So the cool thing with this is we have a new role manager so yeah, check this out. We have over 30 roles now. So either you can go at the higher level like management configuration log management, or you can get super granular and say, you know, I want to 
create a security admin role who can't mess with any of this because we don't want security to mess with any of this, but maybe we want them to install some content packs, view a few alerts, um, you know, do some interactive analysis. That's always important for security guys. So, you know, you just create, obviously dashboards are important. So you just give them full permissions on all of that. Um, you create the role, call it, you know, SecOps. Um, and boom, you have a new role that you can create. And then you can assign that role as normal to users and groups. So if you have a bunch of security users that need the SecOps role, um, previously, maybe you had to give them too much permissions or maybe not enough permissions, usually too much. So now you can kind of restrict those people down. Maybe you have app owners that just need to see dashboards, nothing else, and maybe even just a certain set of dashboards and nothing else. You can do that now. And you can get much more granular and give access to many more parties. Uh, and you can, you know, do do a lot more troubleshooting with, you know, um, your your other groups instead of just having to rely on the operations team to log in and say, you know, let me figure this out. I can't give you access because of X, Y, Z, you're going to see too much. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll allow for some collaboration and it'll allow for some, you know, make the security team happy that you can, you can lock some users down. So um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty streamlined too, as far as the GUI goes. So if you, you know, we have these roles and if you, um, you know, if you want to I'm trying to see, where is it? Users and groups. So, um, yeah, so if you wanted to just assign anything like that, you can do that and um, move on from there. So that's one of our, our more ancillary um, additions we made, but still very cool. Um, like that one a lot. And then we also made some changes to the alerting. So looks way different than previous versions of Log Insight. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more streamlined. It's a lot cleaner. It mirrors Log Insight Cloud. So kind of if you're familiar with Log Insight Cloud, it kind of has the same UI as that. So then we can, you know, filter through our alerts. If we want to see Apache alerts, if we want to see any kind of alerts, we can do that. Um, for some reason, none of my alerts are coming in. We'll check out the system alerts. So, you know, we have a big... Um, Big hunk of more system alerts. I think in the last version of Log Insight, we were limited to maybe a few. So, way more alerts now. If something's wrong with the environment, you'll get a you know um, notified if your worker nodes, your master nodes are down, upgrades failed, collections are failing. Uh, these were a little more sporadic in older versions of Log Insight. Now it's pretty granular on which you can set and which you can choose turn on and off. It's much cleaner. Um, and then for some reason. We're missing alerts here, but yeah, basically it's it, it's a new UI mirrors Log Insight Cloud, and um, I think it looks pretty clean, a lot easier to use, um, and a lot you know just more streamlined. And then we made performance enhancements. Uh, we increased the number of virtual IP addresses that you can set up in Log Insight. So I think um, the original number of VIPs was in the single digits. Now you can have up to sixty. So if you want to, so if you want to break up your your storage goes to its own VIP. Your storage logs, your networking logs go to their own VIP. Uh, logs from an application can go to their own. You can go as crazy as you want, and you can forward those uh, to different VIPs if you want to um, you know, yeah. make it a little more streamlined. Maybe fill us in a little bit about why you would use a virtual IP with Log Insight. Yeah, so um, I think the main reason customers would use virtual IPs is just to kind of separate out their event traffic. So you know, maybe if you have a... I guess a um, bunch of storage arrays that are reporting to Log Insight. Instead of pushing them all through the same VIP, um, you can push that through a separate VIP and kind of, for organizational purposes, push them all through that. And then maybe you have some network equipment that says, you know, um, I want to have all these Cisco switches go through this VIP, and I want them to come through this IP address. And then you can add tags. So you know, once you uh, separate all those components out into their own virtual IP addresses. Anything that's coming through a storage array, maybe you have a bunch of NetApp arrays, you could tag it as NetApp, you could tag it as NFS, you could tag it as uh, low tier storage, high tier storage. So when that comes in and you can query those events, it'll be, you know, have some of those tags in there. And then, you know, if you have one for the networking switches, you can um, you can tag it Cisco, you can tag it NSX, tag it networking. And then, you know, you have a cleaner way of um, separating your events because if all your events come in through one VIP in a giant jumble, um, it might be tougher to, when you're troubleshooting, see what's going on, where it's coming from. 
um, see what's important, what's not important. So obviously if you tag like this, it makes things a lot cleaner, a lot easier to do root cause analysis, a lot easier to query and just a lot easier to, to use in general. Sure. And those tags are, so those tags are applied upon ingestion. So you can do things like uh, forwarding based on those tags and partitions and, and all of that sort of stuff. Right. Right. Exactly. So if, yeah, if you have a tag come in that says net app or storage and you want that to go mm -hmm. to one of your lower cost partitions or a partition that deletes after 10 days instead of 30 days, uh, go for it. So it'll go into that partition, anything that says net app, um, you know, maybe you have, um, you have a forwarding to Splunk or you have a forwarding to some other third party, and then maybe you keep those for five days and you erase them. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you have something coming from an auditing, um, you know, SQL database or an Oracle database, some auditing information, some information that is very important. You keep like, you know, vMotions for Oracle. So you make sure you stay in the same clusters. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to keep that for, you know, nine months, 10 months, 12 months. Um, you have all that coming through an Oracle VIP. You can keep it as long as you want, and then you can purge it or, um, you know, you can send it to archiving. So you can get pretty, pretty powerful with this this once you um once you actually set it up and you kind of understand what you need from your environment, uh, what needs to be kept long term, what needs to be kept short term. So um, it doesn't all have to come in to a jumble and then you know you don't have to keep it for 90 days. You can use the um, our cool log management capabilities to create partitions and do all that stuff, slice stuff up. So you can um, keep what you want. And then anything you want to keep longer or anything you want to go to the cloud, you can obviously use our new Log Insight feature to Log Insight Cloud. And then say, you know, you have something that maybe I want to keep in the cloud. I want to get it off prem, um, move it there. And then we have obviously index and non index partitions in Log Insight Cloud, which we can talk about a bit. And then you can keep or drop based on, you know, how important that event is to you. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's really cool. So, I, I mean, perfect segue into Log Insight Cloud. I mean, you you've uh, got a number of new features there too that uh, seem pretty exciting. Maybe we can kind of cover some of those here. Absolutely. So, one of our coolest features, um, I think I'd already mentioned it, is the log management. Just like in Log Insight, we have log partitions. So, this is still in beta, but we obviously it's one of our coolest things, so we want to cover it. So just like our log partitions um, on-prem, we have our uh, log partitions in cloud. So we use terms indexed and non-indexed storage. So indexed storage is your live storage. Um, it's queryable. It's fast. Um, it's 30 days. So you know this is the data that's going to be hot. You're going to be using often. Um, you're going to be doing root cause analysis. You're going to be doing auditing. Uh, you need to see what's going on. You have 30 days in this index partition. And then you can choose what goes in there or what doesn't. Um, I just got access to this today, so I haven't had a chance to, to make it look good. But um, in the future, it will look much better. And then we have our non-index partition. That's our longer term, slower storage. Um, you know, it's it goes off. It'll, it can be kept for seven years. So if you have any auditing requirements, you know, from, from SOX or GLBA, anything like that, um, keep it for seven years. You can let your auditors in it. Um, you are charged based on querying it. So you're not charged based on querying the index partition. But since this is long-term storage, it's got to be you know pulled out of storage and it's got to be indexed and all that stuff. So there is a charge for for querying it and there is a charge for storing it, though it's you know pennies to the dollar compared to the index mm -hmm. partitions. So what's nice about that is you can figure out what's important for your organization, whether it's certain application logs, certain audit logs, certain um, storage or networking logs, keep them in your index partition, do your fast querying, do your, your root cause analysis, do your auditing. And then maybe you're, you know, you're done with those logs after a few days. You say after seven days, after 10 days, these logs need to go to the non-index partition. So they move to that partition and they go into a semi-cold storage and you never have to think about them again. Five years down the road, somebody says, hey, what happened in 20, you know, 2021 when this user <laughs> deleted a bunch of stuff and we never noticed until now and it caused a huge issue? Well. Let's go into the non-index partition. Let's pull up those logs and see that, oh yeah, you know, you know, Matt deleted half our environment and we have to go talk to him and ask him, you know, why he didn't tell yes. us. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. That was, that was a bad we're, day. We're we we all now. have those. It was my yeah. cat. <laughs> it was, cat. It was yeah. my cat. That's fair. Exactly. I mean, everyone just rage deletes every once in a while when we've had a so. <laughs> as long as we have backups. So that, you know, that that's a pretty, pretty cool feature we have. Um, I think it'll be very popular, obviously, since it saves cost 
like I said, it's, 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 um, it's a big, you know, for you go from a few dollars of ingestion per gigabyte to a few pennies, um, or a few cents that's, that's huge. So we can save a lot of money and we can save you a lot of, uh, on-prem storage, which is the big thing. There are customers out there that say, you know, I don't have 10 terabytes, you know, on any of my storage arrays to store 10 terabytes of logs for seven years, even if they're compressed, even if they're NFS. And I've heard that before from customers. So with this, you don't have to go out and buy a storage array. You don't have to go out and buy uh, long-term cold storage. You know, it's all set for you on an S3 bucket. All you have to do is move it up to log inside cloud and let, you know, let the magic of SaaS do all of the, um, the um, compressing, all of the long-term storage for you. And it's there, you don't have to think about it. You don't have a storage admin asking you, hey, can I get rid of this? It's been two years, three years, four years, five years. <laughs> right. Or 300% over partitioned or over, over um, subscribed. So we need to get rid of something. You don't have to hear any of that. Just, you know, let it, let it sit and use it if you need it. And if you don't, you can uh, purge it out. Awesome. So um, yeah, that, that's a, a pretty, pretty awesome feature. Um, another feature we have coming up is or actually another good feature we have is I always like to mention this is just our our public cloud integration. So you know we have over I think you know 40 different integrations for AWS, a bunch of different integrations for Azure and GCP. So you know it's not a VMware only kind of one trick pony product here with log inside cloud. Um, if you want to and just start ingesting your AWS logs, if you want to start ingesting your Azure logs, maybe you don't even you know have a VMware environment. You know that's fine. Maybe we can, you know, just pull these logs in. You can do your your root cause analysis. You can pull it all in these different. You can have a single pane of glass, which I think is the nicest reason to pull all these logs in. So maybe you're saying, why would I pull logs in from GCP and Azure and AWS? I don't have an application running in all three that I'm going to need to correlate logs with. You know, maybe that's not exactly what you do it for. Maybe you do it for to get this awesome single pane of glass. So maybe you have all of your logs coming in from GitLab from certain AWS applications, from certain Azure applications, from GCP, and you say, okay, this is all in one spot now. I don't have to worry about having AWS CloudWatch or, I'm sorry, yeah, AWS CloudWatch or Azure's logging solution or GCP's logging solution, I have to log into all of those and do my querying and have a bunch of different windows open. No, with Log Inside Cloud, you send it all to these sources. Now you have a single pane of glass to look through and do your root cause analysis, to do your auditing, do your troubleshooting, do your security analysis, anything you want to do, you know, just one window, all the logs are there and, you know, they're going to be super fast. They're running on very quick storage. So you don't have to worry about anything on-prem. You don't have to worry about flooding your, your storage arrays or anything like that. So um, mm -hmm. I think that's always a big feature. Yeah. And a very, very cost-effective one at that. And I mean, what's, what's nice about the log sources is these also will take you step by step through how to configure these too, right? I mean, um, that's Absolutely. that's kind of a big thing. Is okay, I've got my AWS services. How do I get these logs into Log Insight Cloud? Yeah, you don't have to go. Yeah, it's amazing because you don't have to go digging. You don't have to go digging through documentation because it's all right here. Right. Yeah, nobody likes going through Google and typing how do I or logs from log inside cloud to cloud and like then you get like nine different blogs of people doing it wrong and one of the blogs is 10 years old and then the, you know the yeah. instructions yeah. don't apply anymore so this is going to be kept up to date and yeah. it's going to be you know five steps and you're done so yeah awesome. and, and what's cool even i mean at the top there right you've got the tab for mm -hmm. logs if we were pulling in logs from say cloudfront hey you can see like immediately did that work so that's that's yeah. really nice really streamlined Definitely. So I think they, you know, log inside cloud, cloud come a long way. And, you know, the, these features are just going to keep getting better and better with every release. Um, and we're going to be getting a lot more cool stuff. So it's always exciting. Um, let's see what else. We have log RCA, which is another thing in beta. So with a log RCA, um, you know, you come in one day and half your ESX hosts are down. You don't really want to troll through the logs to see what happened and, and narrow by host and narrow by um, timestamp and look, okay, so I narrowed it down to an hour when this might have happened and there's uh, 500,000 logs. That's a pain in the butt. So, you know, we can have job security right there. Uh, I guess. Yep. If, yeah, I guess if you like smashing your head against your desk, it's job security. Um, but with Log RCA, we can have, you know, AI and ML do all that for us. So all we have to do is create an investigation, give it a name, um, say, okay, this incident happened last night between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. Um, do the scan period, which you know, five minutes is good. 
and then check out the anonymous log sensitivity. Um, so, you know, how, how hard you want to check for outliers that might not be applicable to what you're looking for. So once you do that, you run your um, log RCA and then it does its thing. And then it says, okay, based on our, you know, ML, based on our AI, based on what we, we've learned, the top activity during that time that might be an issue We'll give that a score of 73 because it's pretty relevant. And these 16 messages are basically saying that, you know, something might have happened. Um, a user might have logged in and caused an issue. You know, someone might have logged into the NSX manager and made some changes that they didn't need to make, or they might have made some um, changes to the SX hosts that might have stopped the management agents or might have crashed some of the storage. So, you know, the the RCA will will put all that together. It'll look through it, it'll say, okay, I'm seeing a lot of storage error messages. I'm seeing a lot of NSX error messages with the API and I'm going to bundle these together. I'm going to say they're important um, and I'm going to show them to you right in you know this nice little chunk here. And then you can do your breakdown. You can see all the activities and you can say, okay, something bad happened at 2.30 AM and I have to go talk to this user and see what they did. Or I have to go talk to the storage admins and say that, hey, all of your paths went down at 12.30. Why am I telling you this? You should be telling me this. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So um, Log RCA, it's obviously here to make your life easier, to make troubleshooting easier, and to make sure that, you know, um, you don't have to go trolling through scores and scores of logs and want to smash it against the, the desk at, you know, 5 a.m. when you're woken up by a pager. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Helps bring you to that conclusion that it was Thomas Bryant in the data center with the hedge trimmers. Hey, hey, hey. it's always the network. There with hedge trimmers, so <laughs> always the network. It's not me. <laughs> no, you're right. It's never, it's never ESX. So I don't even know why I use DSX as an example because it's never ESX. <laughs> Solar flare. Um, I think that's everything. Matt, did you have any? Any other things that? No, I. Okay, cool. I, I think that was a, that was a great overview of uh, you know everything. We got the bonus of Login Site Cloud too, yeah, so uh, thank you for uh, for giving us that as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add as far as uh, Login Site or maybe where people can go for more information. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we've got our our Login Site uh, Twitter, which we can you know post this and a few other um, interesting tidbits as they come out. Um, we've got our um, I think our, our YouTube channel has some some pretty good information on Log Insight. Got our hands on labs. If you're interested in doing more with Log Insight, you can always go to them and actually get your hands on a lab and kind of learn how Log Insight integrates with some of our other products like VROPS and uh, Verney and kind of get 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 your hands wet there. Um, or you can kind of just go on our um, you know our, our main um, I think it's our Log Insight or I'm sorry our, our cloud management blog site. Uh, there's there's blogs from me. There's blogs from everyone talking about you know. If you want to forward logs to AWS, there's some um, some ideas on how you can do that. If you if you're interested in using FluentD with Log Insight to get some Kubernetes logs going into Log Insight, check that out. I, I wrote a few blogs on that, or just anything your heart desires. Um, you know, check out the blogs, and there should be some good stuff there. Yeah, you have been uh, busy for many years now with uh, Log years. Insight and publishing great blogs on on you know how to do all of these things. So we will link uh, these in the com or description below for you to uh, check out. Um, as well as, you know, VR Pathfinder, if you want to go see um, demonstrations of, or, you know, watch some videos or uh, of how these features come together, check out pathfinder.vmware.com. Um, we've got that for Log Insight, for your operations, automation, all the VMware products, all in one place for you to check out. Sounds great. So Nico, I, I know you're new on Twitter, but we're going to put your handle up there. And so hopefully anybody that has questions, comments, concerns, praise, more importantly, uh, yeah, about Log Insight, they can really find you right yeah. on yep. Twitter. But yeah, seriously, any questions, throw them on and I'll do my best to answer them. Fantastic. Yeah, let's try to get to double digits of followers each today. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can buy double digits of followers, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, don't want to, I, don't think, I don't think it's in the budget, but thank you. <laughs> well, again, Matt, uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, you can find Matt Bradford on Twitter at VMSpot, and I am Kix1979 
which was so much cooler so long ago. Uh, and of course, you can find out more information and interact with us all uh, at VMware Cloud Management on Twitter. So any questions you may have, if you don't know where to go, what was that guy's name? Nico, Matt, something, just find us at uh, VMware Red. Cloud Management. Yeah. Smat. 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 I need to learn my <laughs> I swear I'll learn my Twitter handle at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Take care.